This is the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. I'm Kevin Shola. He is a conservative, and he is what America needs. And I know that I know I'm supposed to be kind of Kansas centric right now, okay? But I'm talking about all of America. Sarah Palin is hard at work campaigning for candidates across the country, knowing that our future hangs in the balance. Today, we're joined by Senator Pat Roberts of Kansas. He's endorsed by Palin and locked in a pivotal battle for re-election. Palin throws her support behind four great candidates running for attorney general. A brand new Commonwealth Common Sense with Susan Stimson is coming up from Virginia. And just ahead, our latest edition of Steel Resolve with Sarah Steelman in Missouri. First, Senator Pat Roberts is with us. In her endorsement of Roberts, Governor Palin lauded him for standing up for Mike Lee and Ted Cruz, and she calls this former Marine a good man and a consistent conservative. We're happy to have him here today. Senator Pat Roberts, welcome to the Palin Update on Mama Grizzly Radio. How are you? I am just fine. And tell Sarah hello and tell her thank you for uh, coming to Kansas, to Independence, Kansas. Uh, Where else? Uh, she set the crowd on fire. Uh, we've been going strong ever since. I think I think her appearance uh, could pretty well coincide with this race turning around. Well, that is much appreciated, no doubt. And that was a heck of a speech, not only by the governor, but by yourself as well. And, you know, you had to love the uh, little quote-unquote argument, right, of whether you're the third most conservative or fourth most conservative uh, senator in Washington. The answer to the question is, is that you are a consistent conservative. And let's get that out of the way first, sir. I mean, you have been consistently on message. You have stood up for Ted Cruz and Mike Lee along the lines when others did not, and you have fought for all Americans in Kansas and throughout the U.S., and I think that's why the governor's behind you. Well, I appreciate it so much. I'll take third, fourth, fifth, or whatever, but uh, we stand united together. Ted was just uh, uh, in Kansas for me a couple days ago, and Tom Coburn, uh, crusty Tom Coburn, and uh, he was with me for two or three days. He just got... uh, his seventh book out is called The Waste Book. He's had seven years of that. And you ought to read some of the things that we could cut out of the federal government. I'm telling you, he really does a good job with that. You know, people talk about the Senate. I mean, that's the big deal on everyone's mind right now here in 2014. Will it be in the hands of Republicans or Democrats or even or where will we be? What is the difference, sir, if the Senate is controlled by Democrats or Republicans in January of 2015, and thus, why is your election so important? Well, uh, I think it's pretty obvious that the road to a Republican majority comes right through Kansas now. And uh, with a Republican majority, we can repeal and replace Obamacare. We can stop amnesty. We can open up the Keystone Pipeline. We can grow the economy. Uh, But you can't do it uh, if Kansans would uh, vote for my opponent. Uh, Greg Orman, they're they're not going to do that. They're uh, they're learning. That's why we're pulling ahead in the polls. That he is pro-abortion. He's pro-amnesty. He wants to restrict the First and Second Amendment. He won't repeal or replace Obamacare. He is not an independent. He's given thousands of dollars to Democrats, more especially uh, Harry Reid and uh, Hillary Clinton, and obviously the president, and. Uh, about 175,000 bucks. So by deed, by donation, and what he stands for, uh, he is not an independent. He is a liberal, uh, a liberal Democrat. He won't own up to that. He won't come clean. He won't shoot straight. But uh, we're shooting straight, and so we're we're uh, setting the record straight. And Kansans know this, and the more they know it, well, the more we pull ahead. Yeah, it's almost like putting that independent moniker next to his name because he doesn't want some folks to see that Democrat word, yet have other Democrats who know his real deal to vote for him. Now, you mentioned Harry Reid. So did Sarah Palin. Basically, in her endorsement of you, uh, said, hey, this is a vote either for Senator Roberts, a good man, a consistent conservative, a former Marine, or a vote for Harry Reid. You're not running against Harry Reid, but you're running against a guy who would probably give him a blank check or a rubber stamp. Well, Greg Orman won't do anything except to roll uh, or, or to roll back Obamacare. He's not going to do anything to stop uh, Barack Obama or Harry Reid. The president said just about a week ago, uh, as I recall, that this election is now a referendum on his policies, his programs, 
uh, his legacy. And so this is a referendum, and Greg Orman will back him all the way. Uh, we're telling folks, a conservative uh, leader like myself, with experienced convictions, uh, we will deliver a Republican Senate majority. And uh, it, it's all the difference in the world. Now, we've seen President Obama break so many promises. He's talked about so many things over the years and either hasn't done them or unfortunately has, you know, trying to fundamentally change America, as he said a few days before that first election. And sure enough, he's stuck to that. But one of the things he talked about was Guantanamo. He talked about closing Guantanamo and then, uh, you know, other things uh, gotten his way, so to speak. And President Obama has uh, changed on that and has uh, done a dance around that. But your opponent, Orman now, has what? Mocked your leadership here on Guantanamo Bay. Uh, this just uh, breaking this weekend. Tell us uh, what that's all about and, and what your response is to those comments. Well, Kevin, back in, that, in uh, 2009, I stopped Obama from uh, bringing uh, terrorists to Fort Leavenworth in Kansas. That's the intellectual center of the Army. Uh, we certainly don't want terrorists in Fort, Fort Leavenworth or, in, or, for that matter, anywhere in the continental uh, United States. The Congress passed a ban on bringing terrorists to the United States. Uh, I think it was the Wall Street Journal that broke the story that uh, the president's weighing options to close Gitmo and to send the terrorists to the United States. There's 179 of them still remaining along with uh, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Uh, I have said that this is not going to happen. Uh, you remember Ted Cruz standing up and warning America about Obamacare. Uh, if, this, uh, if this were to be tried by the president, I want to send a clear message. I will shut down the Senate if I have to. Uh, this is not going to happen, not on my watch. And I have made that very clear. And then uh, all of a sudden we had uh, my opponent's campaign mocking me uh, for taking that stand just shows you uh, how far left this guy is with regards to his campaign uh, coming out and mocking me with regards to that strong stand with regards to Gitmo and moving terrorists to America. With all of the turmoil we've seen overseas of late, uh, from ISIS to the situation in Gaza to, well, really some things on the home front too, why in the world would anyone, Democrat, Independent, Republican, uh, like you say, bring Gitmo to Kansas, bring Gitmo to anywhere in the U.S.? Isn't that the point of not only uh, a prison like that, but also, you know, this is why our brave men and women are overseas fighting, so it's not happening on U.S. soil. I mean, are they serious about this? Is this just them looking at polls and looking at special interests? Or why, why would they even want anything like that? I think that the president, from the outset of his campaign, promised he would... Uh, he would close Gitmo. He was under the illusion uh, that if he did that, that would send a message to the uh, Muslim world that uh, uh, somehow that uh, we cared more for them or something, or that we would uh, be cast in a better light. I think that's nonsense. Uh, you summed it up very well. We have our men and women in uniform uh, now in Iraq, and uh, we are bombing, uh, it, it, well, we are pinpricking with regards to uh, uh, a bombing campaign, but we see the savagery of ISIS. Uh, this really leads to a much larger story here, and that's this president leading by following. Uh, when, you, when you do that, you leave vacuums, and then bad people fill vacuums, and then when you still continue not to do anything other than leading by following, uh, really bad things happen, and that's what we've seen in Iraq uh, with, uh, with ISIS. I think the president has to come to the Congress uh, in this lame duck session if he's going to try this at all, and he should. Uh, that should be the first order of business for the president to come to Congress explaining what his strategy is, what his plan is. He's not done that. Uh, and really, uh, uh, we need that before we even start to think about sending men and women uh, back overseas into combat where victory is not well understood, not, not well defined. Uh, and then the Congress should stand up, and uh, if we feel this isn't our national security interest, uh, as explained by the uh, uh, the uh, uh, commander in chief, uh, uh, why why then we should vote to go to war. Uh, I don't trust this commander in chief with regards to any military operation. I'm sorry to say that, but past history has shown that uh, every time the military uh, leaders or the command uh, recommend something. Uh, either does nothing at all or it's about half empty. And uh, I'm just um, 
as a Marine, I I don't um, I really don't trust the president in uh, in that regard. Well, you would think you would be applauded from all sides for trying to stop terrorists coming to Kansas or any state for that matter. And here you have an opponent who's mocking you. And let's hope that voters can. Uh, you know, see through that as we move forward. You've been all over the place, a statewide bus tour throughout your great state. And, um, I, you know, I know it's got to be a little nerve wracking with this race being so important, but I mean, you seem to look like you're having fun too, and a little rejuvenation. I, I know the, uh, the Palin stop was a big boost, but also everything else you've been doing. I mean, I know your grandson's been with you at a point and, and you've been all over in all different towns, meeting people and shaking hands. I mean, you're a veteran at this, but I mean, it almost looks like a first campaign the way you're out there. Are you enjoying any of it or is it too stressful? Oh, it's not stressful at all. Uh, I take every campaign very seriously. Uh, this one is uh, against a backdrop that is very unique in Kansas and, for that matter, all over the country. And uh, our Republican Party has to come together. Uh, we've had uh, Sarah in. We've had almost everybody within the party in here. They know me. They trust me. And they're here for one purpose, and they know that, uh, again, the road to a Republican majority leads through Kansas and 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 other states as well, uh, but we're going to win, and 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 we are having fun. Uh, I can't tell you, uh, we were just at a uh, uh, sort of a county fair kind of uh, deal in Wyandotte County, uh, that's over in Kansas City, and so many people come up and thank us, and uh, so uh, from a standpoint of people walking up and saying, "I'm for you," man, I'm way ahead, and we're on the way to Salina. Uh, that's quite a bit away from Kansas City. We're in the the Flint Hills and tall grass country and uh, riding on a bus and uh, singing, uh, singing on the road again with Willie. (laughs) There you go.